Hi, I'm Laura, and welcome back to The Tarot Genie, where you receive intuitive answers from the tarot to your burning questions about business, career, creativity, entrepreneurship, personal development, politics, and more. Today, we're going to ask the question, how do you deal with backstabbing? Or how do you deal with intense criticism? How do you rise above it? How do you transcend it? And to that point, the significator card for the reading today is the Ten of Swords. Swords are often associated with communications, stab, literally stabbing, we see in this particular image. A man or a person, it's probably a man, I'm not, well, we can't be sure, but it's a person who is laying on the ground, lying on the ground, and has ten swords in their back. And it almost looks like the dark night of the soul is a dark night, although it appears here that the sun may be rising in the distance. But it's definitely a scene where someone appears to be completely depleted, been backstabbed, been defeated. And this comes up often, especially I was coming across some things on the internet, on YouTube. Um, personal development authors, etc., talking and talking about and getting intense criticism, you know, online and how you deal with it. You get started getting these trolls and these people that just pipe in with intensely cruel remarks or ridiculous remarks. And how do you you know how do you withstand that? How do you stay strong with that? And it's true. I mean I know in the past before we were talking about online or things, or even in the more more recent past just being aware of some situations, I knew that probably I was being trashed, in particular a personal situation, and it just irked me to no end and to realize that I was being trashed, perhaps to this other person, and I had no way of defending myself. It just it was an it was an impossibility, and I kind of had to rise above that. So I thought, given that the frequency of trolls and the amount of cyberbullying, frankly, on that we experience online. And especially, most recently, this past week, when Mitt Romney, Senator Mitt Romney of Utah, spoke so eloquently and from the heart about why he was voting to convict Trump, being the only Republican senator to make that choice. After that, and he said he realized he was going to res to get a lot of flack. He was going to be get all kinds of criticism from the president, etc. And he did not exaggerate. They not the remarks coming from the Trump and his son Don Jr. were just so reprehensible. However, Mitt Romney, in a way, reminds me of, and I should have also maybe if I can find this right now, but we'll see if it pops up in the reading. It reminds me of the King of Cups, and I'll show that card a little bit. King of Cups to me is like Atticus Finch, someone who's able to just be cool, calm, collected, just that wonderful fatherly image, someone who's able to withstand all kinds of criticism and all kinds of negative feedback, and just rise above, stay above it, stay cool, stay collected. So. Uh, that's going to be the focus today. You know, how can you do this? And you know, what do you need to know mentally, maybe physically and spiritually, how to deal with intense criticism? Because I'm sure every, you all experience that in your life, at least once in your life, if not several times in your life, where you face unfair and brutal criticism for something, or maybe just the way you are, you know, just you irk someone for whatever reason, you, faces a sale you know, you're assailed by just tremendous criticism and backstabbing and lies perhaps as happened with Mitt Romney I mean the number of lies and just exaggerations and just low blows is just unbelievable but I know I feel in my heart that he just can rise above that totally I don't have a book at the moment. Something will come to mind, I'm sure, and also a music selection. So just look for the, that information in the notes. Couldn't come up with it in advance. So let's see. How do you deal with intense criticism? Mentally, physically, and spiritually, what you need to know. All right, let's 
dole out the cards. And let's see. Mentally. Ah, how apropos the Five of Swords. The Five of Swords is, by many tarot readers, is often associated, is often called the bully card. And most recently, in the past couple of years, you notice how this particular bully has orange hair? Well, who could that possibly be? And if we're just talking about Mitt Romney, it's suggesting, well, anyway, this situation mentally, how do you, what do you need to know to be able to withstand intense criticism? Well, I think that you have to realize that this person who is gloating over the situation has no real power. I mean, there's stormy clouds here. It's been a difficult situation, but you have to realize that this is, you know, the five is a, the five numbers associated with change and kind of changing dynamics in a particular particular event. And what's coming to mind, though, is that I just what jumped out at me at this moment, this, the phrase came, this too shall pass. Just realize that this is a temporary situation. It's going to retreat. It's going to uh, subside. That's, I mean, I see this, even though this person and this bully seems to gl be gloating over this recent little battle or squabble that was won, that it's just not that meaningful and it's all perhaps it's just verbal swords are related to words and communications it's just a verbal assault that uh, you just can release you just need to let go of it and not pay it too much attention just realize it's a transitory thing it's not going to last forever and and this one person, I mean, this one person looks very upset, so that could represent a part of you that feels upset. But this other person in the more of the, well, he's not quite in the foreground, in the middle ground, looks kind of calm to me. It's suggesting, well, maybe you move from being really upset to just staying calm and cool about it. I don't know, that's what's coming to mind as I look at these, the stormy clouds and this entire scene and the choppy waters in the background. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, you don't like being treated this way. But it just seems to me that this time will pass. And I think we'll get some more insights from the other cards. But that's what comes to mind first. It's a transitory situation. And even though words can be brutal, words can be cruel, words can be cutting, you can rise above them. I don't know. That's what's coming to my mind. Now physically, oh, how interesting. Physically, this card, it's a nine of swords reverse. So two sword cards really dealing with, you know, being cut. <laughs> All, you know, it's interesting because I chose this consciously as a significator card, you know, backstabbing, cruel words, etc. Physically, it's saying you need to get out of, you know, maybe you've been in that dark night of the soul, you've been crying, you've been feeling angst in your body do whatever it takes to start releasing this to try to transcend it you know this is time to let go to consciously and maybe you need to move your body get out of bed get out of what you've been doing and start moving away from the whole thing to start releasing it that this is what you physically have to get release the feelings of turmoil and anger and upset consciously make a decision you've got to just consciously release it that's what's coming to mind here and it's interesting in this image we have this little battle going on you probably can't see it on the camera but on etched in this on this bed or is a fighting it's people are fencing there they're, they're fighting with swords so it's suggesting you know you just got to let go and consciously you know in a physical way do whatever it takes to release your anxiety, your angst, your, your upset. <clears throat> and finally, spiritually, hmm, interesting, the two of wands reversed. When upright, two of wands suggests someone who is, well, I always see this card as I've got the whole world in my hands. That song too comes to mind. But it's someone who's kind of planning things, gazing out over the horizon, Given that it's reversed, it suggests to me that if you're trying to 
rise above criticism, handle it in a way that elevates you out of the situation, is to deeply internalize like what, what you're going to do next, how you're going to move forward. Internalize a vision for which you have a lot of passion and purpose. You've got to internalize the, the wands deal with passion and purpose. And in this image of this particular individual who's gazing out, suggest to me he's planning something, he's got a vision for something. So to be able to rise above criticism and being backstabbed and being just that onslaught of being assailed neg negatively is to deeply internalize something that's important to you, something that's much, that's going to carry a lot of weight with you and that's going to energize and impassion and give you something that you're really passionate about. That's a key way that you can rise above. You know, you, you take your mind off of the onslaught and you stay true to your purpose. And when you stay true to your purpose, you are not going to get thrown off by anything because you know you're strong. You've got that inner strength, that inner vision. When you have that inner vision and drive and purpose, that's going to carry you above anything and beyond anything. I hope this reading has been helpful for you. If you've not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button.